Safety first. Encouraging interdisciplinary preoperative communication with a virtual huddle. By Kristen Butterworth and others. When providing patient care, interdisciplinary perioperative personnel, for example, surgeons, anesthesia professionals, nurses, use collaborative communication methods that may include verbal conversation as well as digital features of the electronic health record, EHR, such as messaging and ICON status indicators. However, there still may be communication breakdowns that negatively affect patient safety. To measure the effectiveness of perioperative communication, administrators can monitor quality metrics. For example, patient outcomes, staff member satisfaction, adverse event data, OR start times. Results of a 2016 literature review on adverse events, originating from errors in communication, show that organizational culture and communication failures contributed to adverse events across a variety of specialties. For example, pediatric, obstetric, surgical. When team members communicate and share knowledge effectively before transporting a patient to the OR, they may positively influence patient outcomes and safety. Each interdisciplinary team member focuses on a specific aspect of perioperative patient care. When combined with time constraints and an unclear surgical plan, the independent focus can make it difficult for personnel to achieve effective communication and information transfer. Interdisciplinary team members can improve performance, for example, decrease delays, and increase patient satisfaction when they implement strategies designed to optimize perioperative care. Causes of Inadequate Preoperative Communication The perioperative team has a defined workflow, and each team member is responsible for providing a unique role-related contribution to preoperative patient care. As a result, individual team members may perform patient care tasks without additional team member interaction, that is, in silos, and may lack opportunities for interdisciplinary communication. However, it is important that all perioperative team members adapt to changing patient information and effectively communicate with personnel in related disciplines. For example, during preoperative patient preparation, the responsibilities of the different team members may vary. The surgical resident may update the history and physical, the surgeon may visit the patient to answer last-minute questions, and the anesthesia professional may review the patient's past medical history and laboratory test results and assess his or her physical condition to determine the American Society of Anesthesiologists' physical status classification and create an anesthetic plan. Meanwhile, the nursing team members' responsibilities include opening sterile supplies and assessing functionality of the equipment when preparing the OR for the procedure, interviewing the patient, and verifying the patient's consent. As a result, all of the team members may not be in the same physical location at the same time. Therefore, they may not have an opportunity to discuss the interoperative plan of care collectively until after transporting the patient to the OR and administering the anesthetic. Lack of preoperative collaboration may lead to a delay in communicating important information to appropriate team members, which may result in patient care delays and safety concerns. For example, difficult airway, inaccurate site marking, prosthesis availability. Lack of communication among staff members also can lead to failure to request important patient-related information or include patients and their family members or other support persons in communication involving patient care. The Coronavirus Disease 2019, COVID-19, pandemic, and associated risk for virus transmission during aerosol-generating procedures has added to the complexity of surgical procedures. The concern for risk of infection created a situation that requires team members to review the patient's screening status, for example, timing of screening, results and determine if any aspect of the perioperative patient care will involve an aerosol-generating procedure. In addition, before transporting the patient to the OR, 
the perioperative team members should discuss the availability of any needed personal protective equipment. At Penn Presbyterian Medical Center, PPMC, a large urban academic level one trauma center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and part of the Penn Medicine Health System. Perioperative leaders reviewed baseline data for fiscal year 2020 and determined that between July 2019 and March 2020, procedures were on time an average of 75%. Further, the on time rate fell to an average of 51% in May and June 2020. The leaders believed that the data indicated delays related to the challenges associated with care of patients during the COVID-19 pandemic and the need for enhanced procedure-related communication. Strategies to Consider Because of the complexities of surgical patient care, interdisciplinary communication is a vital component of perioperative departmental operations, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. One strategy that can help bridge interdisciplinary communication gaps and promote teamwork is the huddle, a brief, highly focused meeting that enables collaborative and efficient information exchange among team members and fosters a shared view of current conditions to enhance patient care coordination. Perioperative personnel can use preoperative huddles to integrate verbal communication and EHR information when planning patient care. In addition, a preoperative huddle can be an effective tool to help personnel plan safe patient care and prevent COVID-19 transmission. Effective communication should be complete, clear, brief, and timely. The communication should include relevant information and avoid unnecessary or confusing details. The process should be standardized and concise, and communicating team members should offer and request information related to the specified topic. In addition, team members should acknowledge that they have received the information. To facilitate teamwork and improve communication, AORN recommends that an interdisciplinary team that includes perioperative team members should establish and implement a standardized briefing process, that is, huddle, before a surgical procedure. Healthcare huddles can improve efficiency, the quality of information sharing, accountability among team members, and team member empowerment and situational awareness. During the huddle, the perioperative team members should 1. Introduce themselves 2. Verify the patient's name and identifiers 3. Verify that the signed consent accurately reflects the procedure and side 4. Discuss the goals and estimated length of the procedure 5. Review diagnostic test results. 6. Discuss the planned position and pressure injury risk assessment. 7. Discuss required patient skin antisepsis. 8. Verify that all needed supplies, equipment, instruments, and implants are available. 9. Identify the patient's allergies or sensitivities. 10. Discuss any special considerations or precautions. 11. Discuss the fire risk assessment. And 12. Ask questions and discuss safety or equipment concerns. Perioperative personnel also may address additional concerns during the huddle, including venous thromboembolism prophylaxis, antibiotic prophylaxis, the anesthetic plan, glucose monitoring, anticipated blood loss, and the postoperative plan of care. Personnel may use a checklist to guide the huddle and should stop all unnecessary activities and conversations to focus on the information being discussed. The PPMC perioperative leaders decided to initiate a virtual preoperative huddle to support the participation of all required team members wherever they might be located. To implement the initiative, the PPMC perioperative leadership team worked with stakeholders from other entities in the Penn Medicine organization to embed a huddle guide checklist that incorporated parts of the World Health Organization, WHO, Surgical Safety Checklist, SSC, into the EHR. The WHO introduced the SSC as a performance-enhancing tool for teams around the world providing surgical care. 
results of a prospective pilot study to validate the WHO SSC in eight hospitals in different countries showed that the inpatient postoperative mortality rate decreased from 1.5% to 0.8%, where P equals 0.003, after implementing the checklist. However, completion of the WHO SSC may occur too late in the perioperative process for it to prevent delays and improve patient care. At PPMC, the Huddle Guide Checklist is a resource for team members to use to facilitate the discussion and ensure efficiency. The PPMC leaders worked with the Director of Nursing for Clinical Systems to use an application that all team members can access from the Penn Medicine Intranet or an assigned secured clinical smartphone to begin or join a virtual huddle for a specific patient. The online platform allows the user to select a patient, create a meeting, and easily send the meeting link to other members of the care team. Team members also can use a patient-specific QR code to electronically join or call into the meeting. The huddle's virtual component allows each of the perioperative team members to easily share important information without meeting in a specific physical location. The information may include the 1. Possibility that the patient care activities will involve an aerosol-generating procedure and any related concerns regarding the availability of personal protective equipment. 2. Results of COVID-19 testing and screening. 3. Availability of all required medications, including preoperative antibiotics. 4. Anesthetic plan. 5. Surgical plan, including position and appropriate bed. 6. Availability of required implants or equipment. 7. Availability, including sterility if applicable, of vendor-provided instruments or equipment. And 8. Availability of neurological monitoring equipment, if applicable. In addition, the team members can address any outstanding patient concerns without holding an in-person meeting. The perioperative nursing leadership team brought the virtual huddle concept to the clinical effectiveness team, CET, for approval. The CET comprises a range of interdisciplinary team members, including frontline surgeons, lead anesthesiologists, OR nurse managers, the CRNA educator, the associate chief CRNA, the OR clinical nurse educator, the clinical coordinator, the unit-based council chair RN, the manager of materials operations, the supervisor of central processing, and the OR infection preventionist. The CET supported the virtual huddle concept and facilitated procurement of the technological components to allow the RN circulators to initiate the virtual huddle using the secured clinical smartphone with the approved application. The CET strategically identified specific service lines, that is, vascular, gynecology, neurosurgery, to test the effectiveness of the virtual huddle. Perioperative leaders conducted a pilot phase that included a virtual huddle for the first procedures of the day between February 9th and March 9th, 2020. Throughout the pilot phase, the perioperative leaders collected data that included the specific surgeon performing the procedure, service line, date, time, length of patient preparation in minutes, length of huddle time in minutes, first procedure of the day start time, that is, quote, patient in OR at 0730, End quote. participant engagement, and any relevant notes. The leaders analyzed the data and determined that the average length of the virtual huddle was 5.8 minutes and that the team members, for example, surgeons, anesthesia professionals, perioperative nurses, scrub persons, were actively engaged in the communication. The leaders also identified specific items requiring additional clarification, including... 1. A heparin order. 2. A patient's planned postoperative destination. 3. An anesthetic plan of care that required placing an external jugular IV catheter. 4. Change or cancellation of an antibiotic regimen based on patient-related factors. 5. A required pad for lithotomy position. 6. A blood type and screen test before a procedure. 
7. Coordination of a two-surgeon procedure, that is, discussion regarding which surgeon would operate first. 8. A specialized medical device required for a gynecological procedure. 9. Patient-related factors that affected the planned administration of anesthesia. And 10. Surgical positioning details. The leaders realized that although the preoperative virtual huddle took time, it also saved time during the procedure and resulted in safer patient care. Therefore, after reviewing the pilot phase data, the leaders expanded the use of the virtual huddle to additional PPMC perioperative service lines. Takeaways for perioperative nurses The Joint Commission indicates that daily safety huddles provide an opportunity for personnel to communicate patient care concerns and promote a safety culture and are a hallmark of high-reliability organizations. AORN supports the establishment and implementation of a collaborative preoperative huddle. Although the perioperative team members may not discover anything noteworthy during a preoperative huddle, identifying critical information increases the value of the time spent participating in the huddle and may positively affect patient outcomes and department efficiency. Barriers to implementation of a preoperative huddle include lack of access to communication technology, time constraints, workflow of healthcare professionals, and prioritization. Despite these noted barriers, perioperative nurses should support processes such as virtual huddles, in which the benefits outweigh the challenges associated with implementation. Takeaways for Leaders and Educators The role of perioperative leaders and educators includes facilitating process changes to support safe patient care. Modifying bedside processes often may influence quality metrics at the hospital level, for example, OR start times, staff member satisfaction, patient safety events. Leader and educator support for both the improvement initiative, for example, the virtual huddle, and the perioperative nurses who may be responsible for implementation may help improve interdisciplinary team member buy-in and be foundational to the success of the initiative. In addition, perioperative leaders can positively affect staff member accountability when they model appropriate communication behaviors. At our facility, leaders and educators noted that buy-in from surgeons, anesthesia professionals, and staff members was a barrier to implementing the virtual huddle across service lines. To overcome this barrier, perioperative leaders provided daily support shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with personnel at the bedside. Hands-on leader support provides direction and motivation to the team. However, leaders may find it time-consuming to integrate the additional activity into their workflows. Initial direct support should lead to process change in the work environment, after the huddle has become part of the organization's safety culture, leaders should be able to withdraw their in-person support. <laughs>